G'day guys, uh, Adam Kogan here from SSW TV and we are here at Ignite and I have cornered Troy Hunt and we are going to talk uh, to Troy Hunt about how to run Azure on a coffee cup budget. Yeah. What type of coffee cup budget well, are we so, talking about? So that was the start, right? So do we talk about that freeze dried instant rubbish or? <laughs> Blend 40. 43. See, I was trying to avoid naming people. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll go there. Uh, Nescafe freeze-dried rubbish. Uh, or do we run it on uh, coffee shop latte style, so four or five bucks a cup? Uh, or do we run it on the Kopi Luwak, which has the berries that came from the other end of the civet cap, which is 40 or $50 a cup. Right. Okay. So 40 or 50 bucks a month? No, a cup. A cup, all right. So this is the thing, because you don't want your reviewers to cost you 40 or $50 per whatever unit of measurement we use, right? right. Like the, the whole thing is, how do we get more towards what you would normally spend on coffee, which let's say you have a couple of lattes a day from a coffee shop, hypothetically. So, you know, maybe eight, nine, 10 bucks a day. Right. That's where we want to get, and we want to avoid buying two cups of the Kopi Luwak civet all right. monkey Good. thing. Now tell us how. All right, so many, many different things. So I've, I've just done the talk. Right. And I talked about, uh, first of all, app service. So being able to use the app service and saying, I want to run multiple different websites on my one app service. So you can get your app service and you can get, say, an S2 standard service, which is like the middle of the road kind of size, two cores, uh, about three and three quarter gigabytes of RAM from memory, about 190 bucks a month, but you can run a lot of stuff on there. So you pay your $190 and you don't just run, in my case, have I been pwned, I've got other websites on there, they all reuse the same cost. So that's your first cost saving thing. Your second thing is, is that I run auto scale on everything. So I try and keep my number of instances as low as possible, so normally it's just one. And then if I start to get loads and loads of traffic, it goes, oh, your CPU's getting high, and it just automatically puts on another instance whilst the traffic is high, so I get more processing power, traffic drops back off, it starts to take instances away. Right, so that's all Azure architecture stuff. Uh, I guess today a developer can write code that is expensive and cost money on Azure and other developers can write code that's inexpensive. Yeah. Have you ever come across other things other than Azure architecture stuff that is less expensive? I, I think the, the interesting observation there is that now we have this sort of commoditized pricing where you pay for what you use. The more you use, the more you're going to pay. And if you're a developer writing efficient code versus inefficient code, particularly when you hit scale, if you're going to need more infrastructure, then the, the efficiency of that code is going to have a direct impact on your bottom line. So I think there's an interesting discussion there around how much your good developers actually worth. Mm. Because you're going to pay more for the good, you know, theoretically you're going to pay more for the good ones, but if it's going to have a direct impact on your bottom line, mm. then that's, you know, you get to sort of weigh that's these true. things up against each other. But even if you are a good developer, unfortunately today we don't even have the tools that tell us, hey, you just checked in code that was way more intensive than the code you had before. We just don't have that level of tools at the moment, do we? Well, we have a lot of visibility to it though. So, I mean, within Azure, we can do things like uh, simulated load tests very easily. That's in there in the oh, portal. Yes. We can really easily do sort of A-B testing of different web instances. We can distribute load to two separate instances or two separate slots in Azure, and we can go, how's this one going? How's that one going? You know, and if we're seeing that, hey, the new code out there is using more CPU cycles, consuming more RAM, if we're seeing that the response times are slower. So we've we got constructs to do that. Mm. Uh, and even if you just go and oh, look, all oh, that's a little bit hard, I'm just gonna have one website and I'm just gonna monitor my stats. We've got so much visibility, not just from Azure, but from New Relic, which you can get for free in Azure. Fire up New Relic, monitor all your stats for a day, and then load your new website, you know, load your new version, mm. and then have a look at it again. So what's going on with my response that's times? Good. Lots of visibility now. Can I introduce you to um, App Insights? Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, you can. Do you want to know the problem with App Insights? Yeah, tell me. It's too much money. Really? Yeah. It is more expensive than New so, Relic. So here's here's the thing, and like all of these things are it depends scenarios, right? I've run New Relic from day one on Have I Been Pwned, and you get uh, a very entry level instance for free, and out of that you get. Yeah, you know, number of requests per second, uh, response times, transaction times. So you can mm. actually look at your separate pages and transactions. All great, all for free. I ran App Insights for a while and I love the data that came out of it. The problem is your free tier, unless it's changed very, very recently, only gives you a certain amount of data. 
and for a website of scale to have I been pwned, I was exhausting that within a couple of days. So my monthly allocation would go, and then it's like, if you want to keep running this, please pay Microsoft some money. Right, okay, Brian Harry, you're listening. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you, just... you, know, you know what I would have been happy with? Yeah. If they had have said, let's just take sample sizes. So rather than log every single request, and I, like I get this right, because it's gonna cost more money to have more logs, I would have been happy to go, let's just log every one in 20 requests, mm. and I'll, I'll use that as my sample size. Because I've got enough volume that I could take just 5% of samples and still have enough useful info. All right, fascinating. Um, uh, I would just like to finish by asking about uh, have I been pawned? Have I been uh, pwned? Pwned. <laughs> Owned? Whatever. Um, it's very, uh, very cool lingo you use for such an old guy. But <laughs> um, congratulations, you've got a million subscribers. Yeah. Uh, what, what has been the, the couple of reasons that that has been so successful? I, I think there's a few things. Um, I think one of the things is I've been really transparent about it. So every time I've I've had experiences like, uh, I've had experiences where I've lost traffic because I couldn't scale fast enough. I've had positive experiences with uh, table storage, with Azure functions, and I've written a lot about it. So there's a lot of people that have come and, you know, read these blog posts or come to talks like I just have just done, where they go, we want to actually see the mechanics of it. And because I run it very transparently, I think that's really helped it. That's for the sort of the tech folks. Uh, the other thing I think that's helped it a lot is that we have had so many data breaches lately, like yep. massive, massive data breaches, that I've had such a huge feed of, of data that comes into this that is really relevant to people, because many of us were in Dropbox, LinkedIn, data mm -hmm. breaches like that, that it's just got a huge amount of press, because it's, it's broadly relevant to consumers as well. And I, I think those are sort of two of the big factors that have driven it. Okay. And is there any things you want to add to it in the future? What, what are the, some big pieces of functionality you want to add? Yeah, it's a good question. I think probably one of the biggest things I need to do at the moment is I've got so much data that I haven't processed. Oh, there's still lots oh, more. Oh man, I've got, I've got a, a triple figure number of individual incidents that I'm still looking at. And part of the problem is that because I, I put a lot of effort into the verification and making sure that it's a legit data breach, which usually involves contacting the company as well and going, by the way, did you know someone broke into it? And that's always a fun discussion. Because I have to do that, each one is quite laborious. So I have to prioritise. And there's a lot of stuff there which is forums of hundreds of thousands of people, which is important to those hundreds of thousands of people, but it's not millions or tens of millions, uh, that I still have to trawl through. I have to verify whether it's legit. I have to get in touch with the company and go, do you know about this? And that's time consuming. All right. Well, uh, it's been great having you, Troy, short and sweet. Uh, and this is Adam Kogan signing off for SSW TV.